Welcome to this video on the Vijnana Bhairava Tantra, collection of teachings on spiritual awakening. Now we are at the conclusion of the Tantra, of that dialogue between the God and the Goddess. And now the Goddess is asking another question to the God. So this is verse 141, second half. Shri Devi Uvacha, the goddess said, the goddess said, Yadi, if Idam Bapuhu, that is the body, Parayashcha, of the supreme goddess, of the transcendent goddess. Deva Maheshvara, O oh God, O oh Great Lord. Then, Evam, in such Uktavyavasthayam, in such a situation of practice, in such a situation of truth, you could say. Japyate kaha. To whom should one recite mantras? Japashchaka. And who should one uh, and, 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 uh, and who and what is the sorry and what is the recitation? What is the recitation? Dhyayate kaha. Who is visualized? Who's uh, what deity? Should one visualize Mahanata, O oh, great master, great refuge? Pujyate Kashya, and who is worshipped? And who is Tripyati, and who is satisfied by this worship? Huyate Kasyava, and to whom should one offer oblations into the fire, offerings into the fire? Homaha Yagaha Kasyacha and to whom should one uh, and what uh, fire sacrifice and what sacrifice, what ritual should one uh, offer uh, Kasya by whom Kim and what sacrifice and to, to whom and Katam and how and why Kasyava kimartam, for what purpose? Katham, for what kimartam, for what purpose? Spashtametat, this is clear. So now the God answers. Shri Bhairava Vacha, the God said. Esha prakriya, that method of practice. Atra, here, in that situation, Ukta Vyavasthayam, in that, in, in that awakened state, in that awakened state, Esha Prakriya, that method of practice, of reciting mantra, of uh, offering, uh, in offerings into fire and yaga and, uh, and visualizing, all the tantric, all the usual tantric practices, the tantric daily practices, the tantric nitya karma, the, the daily practices of any tantric initiate. Atra here, in that state, bahya, they are deemed to be gross. They are outside. They don't. They do not belong. To that state here, Atra. Struleshveva. They are uh, concerning only what is uh, gross. Those who are gross, Mrigechani, or you who have gazel, uh, eyes of a gazel. So what's the what's the practice then in that state?
What's the practice here? Well, the practice is not visualization, recitation of mantras and offerings into fire. So what is it? So now the God is going to give a spiritual inner, not outer, not Bahya, inner interpretation of those classical, traditional tantric practices, ritual practices. So he says, for example, Bhavna, which can mean a training, ritual training, visualization training, training through imagination to, to make real something which is not yet there. So here it is, the, the Bhavna, Bhavna here, because Bhavna, the, the, the real realization, the realization is <clears throat> Bhavyate is what is realized, Bhuyo Bhuya, again and again, Pare Bhavi in the supreme state, in the supreme state. So realizing again the supreme state is the real realization. Japaha Saha, the recitation of mantras, Atra, here. What is it? It is Swayamnadaha. It is the spontaneous resonance, the spontaneous sound, Nada. Mantraatma, which is which is the real mantra. Japya Idrisha, such uh, a mantra uh, should be recite is what should be recited, is what should be recited. And that spontaneous resonance, that spontaneous sound, is nothing but the silent sound of awareness. <clears throat> that nadaha, that resonance, that sound, says Shivopadhyaya, the commentator, is akritaka aham vimarshatma. It is the, the spontaneous akritaka, which is not uh, which is not constructed, which is not artificial, which is natural. The natural realization of I, of I am. This is Japaniyo Deva. This is the God that should be recited. I am is the real mantra. The awareness that I am I. This is the real mantra. This is the God that should be recited. Dhyanam here for uh, in truth the real visualization. So here you must uh, see that the word for visualization that means in that tantric context visualization dhyana means also to contemplate to see and to meditate, but to meditate in the sense to to look at to contemplate. So the, the true uh, visualization is buddhi an understanding an intelligence nishchala and moving uh, and moving which is a stable stable intelligence a stable vision nirakara without form without structure nirashraya without support that is uh, an understanding an insight and that is directly grounded into the absolute, an absolute insight. Only an absolute insight can be an, abs uh, an insight of the absolute. Natu dhyanam, but on the other hand, visualization is not, or contemplation is not. Sharira kshi mukha hasta di kalpana is not imagining kalpana, uh, body with organs and the face and hands etc it is not that it is not visualizing visualizing the body of or, uh, say uh, sadashiva with 18 arms this is not true visualization this is not true visualization pujanama the real worship 
na pushpadyaihi is not with flowers, etc. Because usually puja means the worship with flowers. Puja pushpa. And the two words seem to be um, connected somehow. Ya matihi kriyate dridha. That understanding, again, that insight, matihi is another word for insight, that understanding, that thought, which is stable, firm, dridha. Nirvikalpe parevyolni, which is stable into the transcendent sky without divisions, without dilemmas, without doubts. Here again we have a, a use of the famous uh, word nirvikalpa in the sense of being without doubt. It's not being without thought, it's being without doubt, without dilemmas, without hesitating. Sa puja, this is the real worship, he. This is sa puja, he. This is the real worship, Adaralayaha. This is the dissolution into the divine sky, into the Parevyomni, into the divine sky, Adarat, uh, because of intensity, because of intensity of, of that insight, of that understanding, which is also Bhakti, devotion, take, taking part in, and which is also Bhavana, feeling, a feeling realization. Atra here, ekatama yuktisthe yaha, the one who um, uh, who uh, practices, who, who practices completely yuktisthe, uh, completely one of those 112 practices, ekatama. Utpadyate, he, he becomes dinat dinam, day after day. He becomes day after day. He, he is produced, literally. He is, again, is that the idea that he is born again. He is born again. He becomes day after day, bharita karata sa. He, 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 his state becomes a state of fullness, bharita kara bhairavi. You remember at the beginning of the Tantra, there was the, that play on words between Bhairavi, the name of the goddess, and Bharitakara, the one who has as her form, literally, her form, fullness, full form of fullness. Satra Triptya. This is the satisfaction to be, the satisfaction of the divine, of the deity, to be aimed at. Atyanta Purnata. This is absolute fullness, absolute definitive, uh, lasting, ultimate fullness. And, 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 um, now there is the Homa. The real sacrifice, the real ritual into the fire, offering into the fire. Very important tantric ritual, Hindu ritual. Mahashunyala ye vahnao huyate. What is offered into the fire, vahnao, of the great receptacle of em into the great um, empty receptacle, that is, into universal consciousness, bhutaksha vishayadikam, offering of what? Offering of objects, organs, and elements, or beings, into that great receptacle, that great empty receptacle, that great space of awareness. Manasa sardham, with the spoon of attention, manasa, with the spoon of attention, because here is the practice of meditation, it's the practice of attention, everything uh, relies, depends on attention. Sahomaha, this is the real uh, fire ritual, the real fire offering. Chaitana Surcha, with uh, the spoon of attention again. Chitihi Sruk, 
the spoon is chitihi, is awareness, but here in the sense again of attention. And um, Saha Homa Hasruk Chachetana. So here the, the commentator mentions another reading, but anyway. Next, Yagaha Atra, Yagotra. Here the sacrifice, the offering, Parameshani, O Supreme Mistress. Maybe this is still the God speaking to the goddess. Tushtihi is satisfaction, is contentment, Aranda Lakshana, characterized by bliss. Kshapanat Sarvapapanam Tranat Sarvasya Paravati O oh, oh daughter of the mountain, because uh, the, the, the mantra, uh, the, 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 sorry, he is giving um, a special etymology analysis of the word Kshetra, the, the, the holy, holy place, sanctuary. Kshapanat Sarva Papanam Tranat Sarvasya. Because he is called Kshetra, what the real Kshetra, the real sacred place, is so called because it protects everyone fr uh, from all uh, sins and destroys all sins. And uh, Rudra Shakti Samavesha Tat Kshetram and the, the real sanctuary, therefore, is not uh, an outer place of, of pilgrimage like Varanasi, for example, but the real sanctuary, the real holy place is Rudra Shakti Samavesha is to be possessed by the divine power, is to be possessed by the divine power, Rudra Shakti, very important, Rudra Shakti Samavesha, very important expression. And Bhavana Para, and that is the, that is the supreme realization, the supreme practice, the real practice, the, the real practice. Anyata, otherwise, of, of that reality that we have just realized through those 112 uh, instructions, ka puja, kascha tripyati, what worship could there be and what satisfaction could there be uh, beside that uh, being possessed by the divine power and having that contentment which is uh, spiritual bliss. Or just bliss. Bliss is consciousness. Consciousness is the absolute. The goal is bliss. And here, snanam, the the bath, because when you go for a pilgrimage to a holy place in Hindu tradition, you take a bath in water. You purify yourself in water, or in a in a tank, in a water tank, in a kind of pool or in a river, like the Ganga in, in Varanasi. But the real, the, the real uh, Snana Miritam, the real bath in water, is Aveshanam, Tatswarupi Swatmana, is bathing, is emerging oneself, is drawing oneself into that essence. What essence? Swa uh swatantra Droning into oneself, droning oneself into oneself. Swatma Swatmanaha. Droning off oneself into oneself. Sarvataha completely. Droning into oneself, um letting oneself be possessed by one's own self, which is um, which has as its essence simple consciousness, chinmatra, the simple fact of consciousness, pure awareness, simple awareness. And that simple awareness is ananda, is a bliss. Bliss of what? Bliss of Swatantra, absolute bliss.
So that consciousness is absolutely is absolutely free. Svatantranana, the, the bliss of being absolutely free, absolutely independent. <clears throat> so that's all for today. I think this is enough. We will see what follows next time. And you see that experience, that simple experience of plunging into oneself, of feeling one's, one's being and wondering at that is the fulfillment of all tantric practices, in fact, of all practices, of all religious practices, of all human practices, you could say as well. This is the fulfillment. This is the heart um, of which all other practices, sacred or profane, are just fragments, mere reflections. And the real living heart of it all is just that space between two thoughts, just that feeling of being, of wandering, of amazement, which is being, self-creation. When I try to remember something, when I see something unexpected, when I remain startled and I fully feel that experience, that moment, this is the accomplishment of all human experiences. And that is the core teaching of all tantric yogas, non-dual tantric teachings and that tantra which is the, the quintessence of all tantric traditions and of all human traditions, that is, of all human experiences transmitted through the ages. That's all for today. Thank you for listening and see you next time.